Hello, I'm Ron Clark with part five of my commentary on the Book of Aries. Today, I'm going to talk about the magic of essential meaning itself, which is the first work in the magic of essential meaning. And it's about, it's titled Perceiving Particulate Essential Meaning. Now, I mentioned in the beginning um, that <clears throat> once you've assured the preparation, once you've completed the preparation, you're beginning the path of brilliance to also begin this first work in the uh, magic of the central meaning because it involves a lot of work, basically. Um, so, you can start this at the same time you start the path of brilliance, the learning how to generate the Adonai light and the Catholic brilliance itself. Um, <clears throat> now, so in, in the preparation, you will already um, have become accustomed to the direct perception of essential meaning. That's one of the two things that I said um, if you've reached step nine of initiation, you've covered pretty much everything except two issues. One is the, uh, contacting the eye, you know, shifting the awareness to the eye, and the other is the direct perception of essential meaning. If these two are not covered in initiation into hermetics, at least not directly. Um, but you may have gotten there already. So, <clears throat> at any rate, you must, at this point, already um, be accustomed to the direct perception of essential meaning. Now, when we perceive the essential meaning of an object, ordinarily, we're perceiving a combination of many, possibly hundreds, of different essential meanings that form a whole that then give us that first immediate impression of a, an object's essential meaning. It's a gestalt, you know, it's a, a collective of essential meanings that result in an object, or whatever we're uh, perceiving the essential meaning of. Um, so, here, the work is to perceive not just the gestalt, but all the parts, all the individual aspects of essential meaning, the types of essential meanings within that gestalt. For example, um, this crystal. Now it presents a clear essential meaning, that first impression. But if I keep my awareness in that state of perceiving essential meaning, and you must know what I mean by now, there is a certain type of awareness um, in which you perceive essential meaning, if you stay in that moment, prolong that moment, you will perceive other aspects of essential meaning other than the overall gestalt of crystal. There is essential meaning conveyed by the different aspects of the form of the crystal, uh, the surface of the crystal, the light glinting off of these surfaces, the cloudiness of the crystal, all the different forms of its you know, aspects, of its shape, the fact that there is a little hitchhiker here. All these things add up to the initial gestalt of the crystal. Now, in organic forms like this, 
living forms like this crystal, um, they all pertain to crystal. There's nothing other than crystal in this essential meaning. The same is true of a plant. I mean, you can look at a beautiful rose bush and all of the essential meaning that meanings, all the particulate bits of essential meaning that you can perceive in this rose all pertain to rose, just to rose. I'm saying with my cat, you know, all the essential meaning of his form is cat. There is nothing but cat there. Now, if he had a collar on, that would introduce the human aspects of the essential meaning having to do with placing a collar on an animal, the collar itself, the making of the collar, you know, all these other influences other than just cat would make up the gestalt of my cat. Um, but he doesn't wear a collar. <laughs> so he's pure cat. Um, so that's organic forms, but then we take human-made forms, such as this. It's the Book of Aries. It has a very strong gestalt, you know, when you first look at it. But if you stay in that space, that mindset, long for a longer period, you get to see all of the other particulate essential meanings involved in this book, the print, the, what it says, how it's composed, the color, the size, the shape, the machinery that created it, all these human things that make up this human-made thing. I mean, this is entirely human made from the, the person who wrote it to the person that manufactured it to the machinery that manufactured it, the materials involved. It all presents its own little bits of essential meaning that make up the gestalt of the whole book taken as a whole. But now, in this work, you need to start perceiving those particles of different essential meanings that make up the whole of anything. Because everything that we perceive is a composite of particulate essential meanings. We can perceive the overall essential meaning but when we start looking at it more closely in that state, we see all these particles. So your job here in this work, this first work of the magic of essential meaning, is to start perceiving particulate essential meanings. And as you do this, even as you have been perceiving the, the larger gestalt of individual things, you s begin to see commonalities, similarities between the uh, essential meaning of things on the whole. In the particular essential meaning, you will see even more of that. Um, you'll see themes you'll see similarities, uh, flavors, if you will, of essential meanings that compose different things. You will see shared essential meanings. You will get to see this, and what you need to do is observe and learn from what you are perceiving. Sort of keep track of all those similarities. Begin to see the commonalities that appear in all form. There are commonalities of essential meanings 
that appear in all forms, okay? Some that appear in every form. Some that appear in certain sorts of forms, certain groups of forms. Like there's essential meanings, very clear essential meanings that occur in all quartz crystal, that make it quartz crystal. You know, beyond the particulate meanings that make it this particular quartz crystal versus another quartz crystal, okay? <clears throat> so you need to study particulate essential meaning at this point and come to know it. Come to know everything about it. So that's why I'm saying this is a long work. This is a long journey that you're going to be taking with essential meaning. The work of a, this magic of essential meaning is okay, you, you, you've gotten your graduate degree, now you're going for your doctorate degree. You know, it's like really refining your work, whatever it's been up to this point. This takes you to another level entirely. So you must become a master of essential meaning, of your knowledge of essential meaning. You will eventually become a master at manipulating essential meaning, but for now, you have to master the perception of essential meaning and really study it. Get to know the genus and <laughs> all the divisions, the types of essential meanings that exist in your surroundings you know, in whatever you can perceive. And, I mean, you have to perceive essential meaning of pretty much everything that you encounter. Okay? So that is the first work in the magic of essential meaning. Next time, we'll be dealing with the second work, emulating essential meaning. It'll be next week. <laughs> so that's it for now. Bye-bye. See you later.